Amen. Is there anyone excited today? Amen. Is there anyone excited today? That your God is able to do exactly what he said he can do. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray. I mean, I want us to just, and I was um, sitting home and I looked on the, um, you know, looking through the, the phone and I saw these two young ladies um, get murdered, I guess. And, know people uh, uh, we got our brother uh, he is in the hospital and we got six ways we just need to be in prayer and then knowing that God is able amen amen, amen. 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 but we are not the children of hopelessness but we are those who walk in hope so amen because with God all things are possible it's interesting I want to uh, um, I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts the third chapter God want us to die. We say in Jesus' name. Let's understand that, you know, we find who is the blessing? I can hear you. Who's the blessing? Point your hands and say, I'm the blessing. Say, the blesser became a curse that I may become the blessing. Say, I'm the blessing. Say, I'm God's written epistle. And the word is written up on my heart. Amen. I thought that was interesting because I'm looking and God dropped this in my spirit. And we're going to begin to read um, from the first verse. And just go down because there's some things that God wants us to know. Amen. And Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, God, that you will have your way and there will be no flesh. Lord, in your presence, and Lord, I pray that every heart be prepared to receive this seed of life, and it will cause it to blossom and bloom and reveal your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Start reading. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Say, when you go to God's house, it's time to pray. As he said, Peter and John, they're going up to the temple, and they said, it is the hour of prayer. So it's time for dialogue. It's time to hear God and for God to hear you. Amen. Prayer is two-way dialogue. They're going to the temple, and they're saying, it's the hour. Say, it's the hour. I was, I was at my, I was at my son's uh, church today, and uh, I was noticing that he preached me. He started out. He talked about the hours. <laughs> it's interesting. Jesus said, "The hour has come." And John said, "It's about an hour." And God said, "It's about a time. It's time. It's time." And they were going to the temple, and it was the hour of prayer. Go ahead. Being the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. Saying being the hour of birth. Amen. Say it's a ninth hour. That number nine means the number of birth. Amen. It means the number, you know, nine months. It's the number to bring something forth. I'm going to the temple, but I'm going to communicate with God because I need something to be brought forth. Y'all oh, hear what I'm saying? God said, I want you. You see, there's a move. God started out with the song. He talked about the praise and worship. But you have to understand something. He says, when I go to the temple, I'm going to the temple, the house of prayer. Because why? I know I need God to bring something forward. How I many you know because God never speaks without purpose? God, God is not like man. You know, men and people, we love running our mouth. People love, love talking and talking and just running their mouth, but they really just don't. And many people say things they can't even back up. They say things they can't even produce. They say things they don't even mean. You know, we all do. You know what I'm saying? And God has to, that's why God has to change the heart. Change the heart, change the words. Amen? See, when God begins to change your heart, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. God says, I have to change your heart because your words are, your words, sometimes we say a lot of words that don't mean anything. Amen? And I don't know, I don't know about you, but when I was in the world, I said words to get what I want. I said words to let somebody know what time it was. I said a whole lot of words. But the words that I said did not reflect the God that I said. I didn't know God, but they reflected who I was, a broken and messed up person. See, when your words come out of your mouth, your words reflect the kind of person you are. They reflect the condition of your heart. Amen? 
Well, he says they go into the temple. I thought they said they go into the temple. And as they're going to the temple, they're going on the hour of prayer. And this being the ninth hour. And I think, and I, I love the fact that not only is it the ninth hour, it's the hour to bring something forward. Look at somebody, no, no, no. See, I'm already, God is already prophetically speaking if you'll grab a hold of it. He said it's the hour of prayer. The song said we've been fasting and praying, God, waiting for a move. God says if you want to move, okay, then you know what? There's, there's an hour of prayer, amen? He said it's the ninth hour. I didn't say it's the ninth hour. He said it's the ninth hour. The ninth hour is the time to bring something forward. When a woman is in her ninth month, she's getting ready to bring something forward. Amen? Keep on reading. Verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, who was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Now I want you to understand something. This gentleman who they are carrying, he's a lame man, amen? He's a lame man being brought to the gate of Beautiful, being brought to the entry to the, to the temple at the hour of birth. Somebody gonna get it. In other words, he's a lame man. He's messed up. Now, I want you to get this too. He's been brought there daily. He's been brought to the temple daily. To the, and it's a messed up thing when you're going to the church and, 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 and nothing's being birthed. It's not as messed up when you're going to the church and the only thing that you expect are tangible things. See, that's what we don't got today, where people are going to the church and what they are expecting is tangible things. But see, this man was lame. So he's going to the church, and because his, his condition is really, you know, he's worse than the things he really, the financial things he really needs. He needs the financial things because of his condition. How many of you know there are many people are trying to find substitutes to cover up their condition? There are people who say, well, I need a man to come up my condition. There are people who say, I need a woman to come up my condition. There are people who say, I have some money to come up my condition. See, but this condition was lame. He was lame. He's not able to walk or for, to function on his own. Anybody in the room? It's funny when you don't have God, you can't function on your own. And you're just like that man. We were just like that man, lame. Meaning that we were not able to, 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 to successfully move into the places and directions we need to move into. But it happened that this man is going to the temple and he is being put in front of the temple in front of the gate, entry. He's being put in front of the place of entry where somebody is going in to communicate on the, uh, the hour to communicate with God on the, ninth, on the ninth hour. God says, I'm looking for a church that's in position on the ninth hour. That he can put people in position to, to, to come in contact with you that can change their position. Some of y'all grabbing. I'm, I'm gonna talk on that side because they, they, they ain't grabbing over there. He says, I'm looking for somebody. See, y'all have to understand this is prophetically. I, I didn't, I'm not making this up. God said, This is where I want you to go. He says, Now they're going to, he says, John and who? Peter are entering into the temple on the hour of prayer. Amen? And it's the ninth hour. They're entering into the temple on the ninth hour. That word, the number nine, means birth. It's giving birth. Eight means the beginning, but nine means birth. It's, a, it's the breaking out of something. Amen? But then, there's a person beyond somebody going to rejoice. Somebody understand that you've been sitting here for a word. But there's been a person daily who's been laying, sitting outside the gate where people are going to be in communion. How can you be in communication with God and not be an answer for somebody? See, God says, I'm tired of a church that's coming and saying you are in communication with me, and yet somebody can't see the moon. Somebody can't be, in other words, somebody can't be, you are in your communication with God himself, he's the creator. Come on, I have never seen anyone in the Bible come in contact with God, at least his presence, and did not receive something that was going to affect somebody else. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Y'all gotta got get this. And this is the night. Look at this one. It's the ninth hour. Ah, it's the ninth hour. Say it's time to bring something forward. It's time to just stop going to church and, 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 and it's time to just stop going to church and be do what you want to do. I know you're going through things and, and I heard it, I heard, I heard Linda say, yeah, I heard this, this, this time of your letter. How many of you know when something is getting birth, it's gonna be, you're gonna have to do some portion. When something is giving birth, you won't have to go through something. See, let me tell you something. Uh, God said, think it not strange when trials come to try your faith. He says, what well, you do think it's a gift. God says, no, I, there's some things occurring in your life. And, and some of us, you've been finding yourself like a pregnant woman. What's a pregnant woman? Especially on the night of the night, she's like ready to do something. 
talking about I'm, I'm doing something, I'm building something, I'm taking you from God says, well, but now I need you to push for somebody else to come and get life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They said, I, I, I underline the word daily. He laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. He's laying at the gate. I want you to picture it as your mind. This is the ninth month. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the ninth hour. They're going in to pray. And they're going in the hour to pray. That means to intercede with God. And, and while they are going in to come into the place and the presence of God, there is an issue being laid on the outside. There's an issue being laid on the outside. The church been inside too long. There are some issues on the outside. There's some issues on the outside that God wants to start doing. Come on now, we, I, 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 I'm, 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 man, I'm sitting and I'm, you can feel the tears when I was showing my wife, we were talking about the two young ladies, they are beautiful young ladies and now their life, and I was saying to my daughter, their life just knocked out for no reason. I mean, it's not like they died in an accident, it's not like they died in the military where there was some significant reason for their perishing. It was just because people were angry and wicked and evil. So now you have two sisters that will no longer see tomorrow because of somebody's wickedness. But God says, I want my church to understand that it's, 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 it's time. Amen? And I, and I, and I, love, I love the part where he says, and a certain man laying from his mother's womb. Mm. 
Mm. He came out the womb this way. He came out the womb needing to be carried. But well, anybody glad? Is there, anybody, is there anyone in here glad that you got to be born again? Come on. Yeah. Is there anyone glad that you get another trip out of the womb, the spiritual womb? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He came out the womb in a condition, but today. If I say but today. But today. Okay. Copy, go ahead and keep reading. Verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple at an arms. So he sees Peter and John going into the temple. And he wants them to, he wants them to bless him. He wants them to bless him too. And it's interesting. When you, when you get used to getting blessed in your crippled condition. When you get used to getting blessed with tangible things. But you still crippled. Come on. You, you want to be blessed with tangible things, but you don't want nobody to deal with your crippleness. See, I know that's the new gospel, right? Bless me, God, with a car, though I'm crippled. Bless me, God, with money, though I'm crippled. Bless me with a husband, though I'm crippled. Bless me with a wife, though I'm crippled. Just bless me with some time. That's what he's asking with arms. He wants some tangible things, but he cripples. He has given up on his position and his condition. So he, when you give up on your condition and position, and I heard the woman of God when she was praying. See, when you begin to give up that you, when you stop believing that change can come for you, you just start settling for tangible blessings. You start just settling for being, to be happy for a moment, even though you're still crippled. But I'm so glad it's the ninth hour. I'm like, yo, come on. That's what, that's what the world do. Because the world, men and women in the world who don't know God, they are crippled. And what they do is, they want temporary tangible things to cover up their crippleness. They got all the money in their pocket. They still cripple. They got beautiful women and men hanging from their arms, but they still cripple. And to stand at the gate of the temple is a sad thing because it's an indictment on the church because he's being laid by the church. And yet, the church wants to, the church has been transitioned to meet arms instead of change its condition and position. The church now, I'm telling you, God is prophetically speaking, the church now wants to call all these things to meet somebody's tangible, their, their, their natural condition. But, but and my word, she been, my man, she in the church, she been nasty since she got here. She been honored since she got here. But you know what? But that's okay because you know what? She paid good times. Man, you know what? He in the church and, and he, you know what? But she, it's, oh, and guess what? He's knocking off all the emails in the church. But he just running through them. But that's okay because he can surely sing. So the church has moved to a place where it wants to give you arms because it no longer has the power to change your condition or position. Yeah. Mm. Because, and so now, they, 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 God, I said, how many people walked past him and was willing to meet his natural need but couldn't change his condition or position? And it's interesting that crippled people get used to being crippled. See, when you get used to being crippled, you're in a state of hopelessness. You don't think that no one can stop you from lying. You don't think that no one can stop you from fornicating. You don't think that no one can stop you from uh, sexual immorality or, 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 or stealing. When you get to the place where you know that's just how I am, no one can stop you. It's just me. I've been seeking God for 12 years. I've been like this for 30 years. I've been like this 40 years. I've been like this. I don't got no joy. I got no peace how I am. So therefore, I have learned to be crippled. And now I'm just excited about hearing God give me something. I'm just excited about God giving me something. So when God gives me something, I'm happy at that moment, but I'm still going, but I still need to be carried. Wow, wow, wow. I still need, I've been in church 15 years, but 
I still need to be carried. But God says the ninth hour. Amen. Amen. It's the ninth hour. And he seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asking and arms. Um, so go ahead. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with okay. John. I want to say, say that. Let's stop acting like we don't see you. Mm. First of all, before we can get to change, you gotta stop acting like you don't see the problem. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I've done it. You know, you drive by and they don't, they got to ask for money on the Christmas. You gonna act like they don't, you don't see them? And you hoping that the light turn green before they get to your car? And you gonna drive by because it, would, it might inconvenience you to roll down your window to have a conversation and say, God bless you. And then we free judge them and say, you know what? Well, they out there, everybody trying to get over. Not knowing what the situation is, but I say, well, let us be careful that we might be into we may be entertaining angels. Right. In other words, you might have be passing by somebody God put there. Come on. To try our heart. Mm. But I love Peter. Because the Bible said he fastened his eyes on him. See, Peter said, Peter said, no, no, no. You know when we were trying to get your attention and you ain't you don't have anything to give them, you try to ignore them. Mm. Empty people. Oh. Somebody got it. Empty people like ignoring people. You know how I do it. I'm going to tell you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't feel this way. Never in church. But you know when you don't have no money, they do all the call you like. I hope they just don't call me. I just hope they don't see me. I don't have nothing to give. And then you hope, and you really hoping they don't do the one where everybody come by hours. You know what I'm saying? You like, you know you ain't bring no money. You like, man. And you sit there trying to look for something you know you ain't got. Come on, you know you don't have no money on you. You know you, you look in your wallet, you know you ain't got no money. You looking for lint. <laughs> looking for a penny you might hit. If you don't have God, ain't gonna no come here, it's okay. But we be looking, because when we come by, then we gonna try to act like we got money when we come by. <laughs> so nobody will see. Amen? <laughs> Yes. 
something. He like a messenger like he has love, like he has compassion. But since we've been, since I'm empty and you empty, you we can both fool each other. Because I'm looking for you to bless me with some stuff. So what we have learned to do with one another is make each other feel good. Yeah. We have learned not to resolve each other's problems. We both remain lame. We both lame. We just know how to make each other feel good while we lame. And lame people can't go nowhere unless you carry it. So I'm trying to carry you. Could you imagine two lame people trying to carry each other? It looks like no progress. no progress. So you gotta have something. So he fast, so the why? So Peter fastens his eyes on the issue. Why he's going into the temple. See, I want you to understand something. Peter must Peter must have had something before he had went into the, into the temple. I want to tell you right now. See, you have a relationship with God. You shouldn't be coming here empty. But when I look at some of our prayers, when I look at them, some of us that I worship in your praise, you look empty. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm sitting, I'm standing up here while she praying, I'm looking around, and some of you, you just stand there. Mm. You have nothing to offer to God. You empty. But I don't understand how you could be empty when he said, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. When he says, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He said, said you're going to be filled with my spirit. Mm. And since the spirit will always give praise to the spirit. See, God will always acknowledge God. The God in you will have to acknowledge the God that you serve. See, even when your flesh is tired. Have you ever been tired? And your flesh is tired. But why you sleep? Your spirit singing songs. Your spirit worship. Have you ever been? I've been sleeping. Remember, I've been not my house for. I've heard your spirit speaking in tongues while you sleep. See, even while you sleep, your spirit says, I got to praise him. I got to praise him. Even when you just lay down when you're tired, I got to praise him. I have to acknowledge him. Because the spirit of God is going to acknowledge the spirit of God. Can I get an amen? Okay, let's, 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 let's break this down. So. And Peter fastens his eyes upon him with John and said, he just said, what did he say? And said, look on him. Say, get his attention. He said, I want you to, I'm looking at you and I need you to look at me. See, there's no one time. He said, I'm looking at you and I need you to look at me. See, we don't want people to we don't want to look at people and we sure don't want them looking at us. Don't we look at me like I got something for you? And I ain't going to be looking at you as you have something for me. Mm, go ahead. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Somebody should have screamed down. See, if you look at, I'm looking at El Chris. And I'm asking him for something, and he won't look away. And he's looking at me, and he ain't gonna tell me to look at me. I'm gonna perceive he has something for me. See, even the people in the street understand this. When they walk past me, you ain't gonna look at them, they keep walking past your car. They have no expectation from someone who won't. But you know, you lock eyes with a word. Somebody. Come on. Come on. 
who's ignoring looking at people. That's paying more attention and focusing on the things they want instead of being able to look at the things God wants them to see. But he says, I like this. He, he says, look at me. He says, um, I like it. He said, Peter said, uh, fasten his eyes on him. And he says, and he gave heed to expect him to receive something of him. I heard one man, why pray if you're not going to expect anything to receive? See? Oh, I feel I felt this in my spirit. Why seek God's attention if you don't believe really he can meet your need? See, that's what some of us have gotten to the place. Because God hasn't moved as fast as you want him to move, or because he hasn't done it, you stop looking toward him with expectation. Now, I'm going to tell you what happens when you stop looking at God for expectation. You start looking to yourself. You start looking to yourself to resolve the problem. That's what alcohol and drugs and sex and lying and clubs and all that bullshit should come in. The devil will give you all kind of stuff to medicate you. How many of you know the devil don't heal you, he just medicate you? It's like a toothache. Uh, Tylenols don't cure the toothache. You just medicate it from the pain for a while. So some of us like being medicated by jumping from woman to woman to woman. Some of us like being medicated by jumping from men to men to men. Some of us like being medicated by going to the club. Some of us like being medicated by having money. I'm like, what, is, what, are you, what are you medicating? You don't even know who you are. So you're looking for everything to make you feel important or feel bad. That's the lamest person. That's what, that was all of us. The most lamest person is a person who only knows his own identity. To walk around lost trying to find out your identity and things that are temporal. He says, he read. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I not. Ooh, come on, somebody should have screamed. He said, You don't let somebody today that can meet your need past tangible needs. You don't let into somebody today that can meet your need past tangible things. See, the problem is, we try to be able to meet the flesh we need, but today, God says, You have need today. The thing that has been crippling you, the thing that has been hindering you, the thing that has caused you not to reflect and show the glory of God. God said it's time for you to fasten your eyes upon him and believe that he can deliver you from that thing. He said, no more looking for substitutes. No more, no more walking around life feeling hopeless about something that I can't get. Every time I can't give it this lust spirit, I can't give it this lust spirit. No, no, God says, fasten your eyes on me. I'm not going to come to you with a bunch of prophets or things, people, things. I have no word for you for no husband or no wife right now. I have not, because you're too crippled. You can't hold it up anyway. There's nothing in you that can hold up the things your flesh wants. Nothing to hold it up. It's a terrible, I want y'all to understand something. A crippled person can, who has to be carried, when you let, let me, let me, come here for me. See, when somebody is crippled, that has to be carried. Here. If you don't carry them, you just stay where they are. So all the potential in you. And you sit here and argue why y'all ain't going nowhere. See, when people are unsaved, they spend their whole life arguing why can't we get past these issues? Why can't you take these? Someplace. Why can't we go? I'm not talking about opposition. I'm talking about when you are crippled. See, if I try to get on her, she crippled, she can't, she just gonna be this lump she can't she can't take me nowhere. So I remain stagnant in life. 
angry at her that I'm stuck because she crippled and I'm crippled. We could, meaning that we, neither one of us have the ability to resolve the issues that are coming in our life. So when you don't have the ability to resolve, resolve the issue, you stay in the issue and argue about it until somebody just died, fall away or whatever. God says, but in the ninth moment, ninth hour, they happened to run into somebody who had something in him that was going to be able to resolve that issue. And God is saying, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. I need to raise up some people that have something in them that can resolve the Christian person's issue. Because the world is stuck. It's stuck in its bitterness. It's stuck in anger. It's stuck. And when something is stuck, you know something? When you can't go anywhere, and you can't be moved because you're crippled, <laughs> you're stuck in your own feces. You're stuck in the own, you don't, you're stuck in dirt. You're stuck, and you, you can't go nowhere. You're stuck in mess. Anybody was stuck in mess before God, or before you ran into somebody that, someone that, 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 that had, that, that could be able to speak to your, you stuck. Just stay there stuck. Hopefully by the end of service you'll be delivered. Amen. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to have dreams and be stuck. It's a terrible thing to have wants and be stuck. And Peter said, silver and gold, I have not. I have none. Because watch this. Silver and gold is not going to get you from being stuck. It just makes you feel good while you stuck. It's gonna make you feel good once in a while. Have you ever got a job and you were still quick? You was happy for a moment and then you was complaining about the job. Have you ever got that, that fine email? You got the fine email. She, you was happy for a moment, then you start complaining about it. See, stuck people only get happy for a moment. Because the truth is, they still can't go nowhere, no matter if they have. The sad part about it, if you bought some money, she still can't go spend it. Here we go. He says, and Peter fastened his eyes, and he says, go ahead. Then said Peter, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Okay, look at somebody say, such as I have. Such as I have. Look at somebody say, what do you have? No, I want you to get somebody for real. Don't be scared to look at him and say, what do you have? Because Peter said, such that I have. Peter says, that's why I said the title of this would be, what do you have? Because they ran, he says, silver and gold I don't, I don't have. But I have something. Come on, somebody. What do you have? Other than trying to make somebody feel good. Other than trying to fool somebody. What do you have? See, if you get this revelation today, when you meet somebody, you're not going to look at what they're driving no more. What do we have? 
You know, the pastor job, the pastor job, go stay, y'all stay there, go, go to Galatians 4.9. See, why am I coming to church? Why am I seeking God? Because I, I needed something. Amen? Because I noticed in life, when I get angry, I had nothing to resolve that. So I escaped from it by taking drugs or alcohol. I had nothing in me in my marriage to resolve that, so I got a divorce and just bounced to another person. I didn't have any, 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 any question. God is asking his church at the ninth hour. Because I'm going to tell you something, and I don't mean, I'm, I'm saying this with sensitivity. I would think there's nothing more painful, and I'm not, please, I'm being sensitive, when I, but, I'm, but I'm, I mean, I'm making this point. There's nothing more painful than a woman to be go through nine months of pregnancy. And then don't have anything at the end. There's nothing more. I, could, I don't even imagine a woman going through nine months of pregnancy and she gives birth and there's nothing there at the end. She has nothing for the people to see that she has nothing for the people to see what she went through. God says, I'm tired of a church that's acting like they're pregnant but don't have nothing to the end. Amen. Read it. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9. But now, uh -huh. after that, ye have known God. After you have known God, go ahead. Or rather, are known of God. Uh -huh. How turn ye again? To the weak and beggarly elements, work unto you desire again to be in bondage. Mm -hmm. Ye observe days and months and times and yeah. years. And I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, mm -hmm. for I am as ye are. Yes. Ye have not injured me at all. Mm -hmm. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you as the first. Yeah. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness that ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, Ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Uh, uh, we said, why is he going there? To give you the understanding when you run into those who have something that you ought to drink from. Eat from. He said, I, I, I love one scripture he says that my desire that Christ be formed in you. I want to see Christ formed in you. For Christ in us is the hope of glory. See, you come to church to get Christ, the seed of Christ in you. When you, when you accept that, you're getting the seed of Christ in you. And all who God is is now abiding in you. That you can say what Peter said. That which I do have. See, what you have in you is greater than silver and gold. I'm tired of us preaching and acting as if Christ was insignificant. Oh, it's good, I'm saved. But now, where's my husband? Where's my house? Where's my stuff? All that stuff couldn't change somebody's condition and position. It couldn't even change yours. Because I'm looking for some people. I got some sons and daughters who rejoice in because they have received the seed of Christ. And Christ, and Christ in us is the hope of glory. See, when Christ is in you, you have here, you are heirs and joint heirs with God. All that belong to the Father belong to you through Christ. So now you don't have to turn your head like you did. You don't have to act like you don't see a situation. See, I, I want us to get this. We, we, 
we gonna get there. We get we and we grow. But we have to get past the stage as if you don't have something. Yeah. See, David learned how to encourage himself, he had to have something in himself. Yeah. You can't encourage yourself, it ain't nothing in you. If the world is not hidden in your heart, if you have no, if the world God is not dwelling richly in you, if you don't have no God in you, how would you gonna encourage yourself with going to get some ice cream? See, we don't watch movies. She all the time, she don't want to do a broke up, break up, so she be like, what am I gonna do? She's gonna sit there and eat ice cream all day like the ice cream is going to heal the brokenness of her people. Oh, what are you gonna do? We gonna go to the bar and get all liquored up in the bar? That's why God is saying, why do my sons and daughters indulge in drinking and liquor? I don't care if it's wine. Why do you need that when what you I have poured into you fresh wine? I have poured into you very essence of my word. Why do you need anything when I'm pouring in you? But the Bible says you lack no good thing. See, we don't understand. Well, we, we like to quote the scripture, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But we don't even know who's in us. We think what's in us as our sugar dad. We think what's in us as our gene. Lord, gene, give me a car. Gene, give me a wife. Gene, give me a million dollar business. See, with those who have contact, Gene, give me that cross. Yeah. Give me that cross. So no longer I live. Because I come to an understanding that when I lived, I was a part of the problem. The way I think and feel was a part of the problem. So no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live in faith. Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing what? Hearing. See the problem. And you know what people like to say? They like to say, you know what? I went to church and I tried the church. Yeah, what you tried was religion. You never tried to drink the word. You never tried to surrender and submit to the word of God. Because you can't surrender. What's it? You can't submit to a seed that produces life and you don't get life. It's impossible. Just like if you submit to a seed that produces apples, you're going to get apples. If you submit to a seed that produces oranges, you're going to get oranges. How are you going to submit to the seed of Christ and not get abundant life? That's what's inside the seed. For the Bible says in John that he was full of grace and truth. How can you submit to Christ and not be transformed? How can you confront truth and still walk in a lie? See, what we have confronted was church. And church says, if you get in the choir, you get on the usher board, you do a lot of works, you're in right standing with God. But then the very scripture says, you're not saved by your works, and you're boast to yourself. But the seed that you have received in you should bring forth life and life more abundant. How can, how come fruit are not blossoming in you? See, you got that. If you have Christ, you must have something for somebody to eat. Because Christ was the answer to life, to death itself. He was the very answer to every situation that took place upon earth. There was not a circumstance or situation that Christ could not deal with. Come on. If he overcame death, what was what's greater? A light bill? Are we getting this? See, he's saying, so Peter had an encounter with Christ. And in the upper room, he was filled with Christ. So on the way to the temple, he filled with all the power of God through the Holy Spirit. So he sees a man that, that is looking for tangible things to be met. But that day, he said, I'm getting ready to give you birth. I'm about to change your condition and your position. I know you've been coming to this day, this thing for seven days, seven days, 20, uh, 24 hours a day, all oh, you here, and you've been getting things that made you feel good, but I'm going to give you something that's going to make you free. 
It's nothing like being free from your position. Come on now. It's nothing like being crippled from your mother's womb and now being able to be free from a condition that you had for years. Oh, that's who God is. God is the God that frees you from bondage. He is the God that delivers. When he delivers you, you are delivered. There is no residue that is still there. Yes, yes. So look at what say God is delivering me. But see, we have to get to the place where we don't become like the lame man. We become content being lame. Because God's presence is here. Amen? Amen. He says, silver and gold I have not, but such as I have give thee. He said, what I have, I want to give. Watch this. He didn't say what I have, you have to purchase. See, the thing that changes you is free. Why does it have to be free? Because if it's not free, then, it's, then, then, then everybody can get it. The thing that changes you from your criminal position is free. No, you were just a good member of the organization. So that's why you were there, but you were never free. You was never free. But God says we're in the ninth hour. And I need to give birth to something new. I need you to be free. Because watch this. Lame people can't cause lame people can't cause other people to be free. Amen? Amen. I, I, you know why I'm so excited? I'm not. I'm excited. Because I know God gave this word. So what does that mean? He's going to watch over this. And some people, why you say, why, 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 why would I say all people? Because some of us are not going to receive it. But I pray that all will receive it. And be free. Your freedom is in Christ. It's a terrible thing when we're now looking for freedom. We come to the church and still looking for freedom in arms and things. Some of us thought, if I got married, I'm going to be free. I bet you found that out. I bet you found that out that real quick. That, that, that wasn't, oh my God, I've been bamboozled. Some of us thought, if I could just get this job, I'm going to be free. We, you know, we got a lot of these work. Some of us think, if I could just get down to 110 pounds, I'm free. Some of us think if I can just get up to 160 pounds, I'm free. Some of us think if, if I can just get my hair a certain way, I'm free. But he said Jesus Christ is free. He said true freedom is in Christ. And that's why we can't preach anything other than Christ Jesus. Because that's the seed that takes you to be free. Some of them think, let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on today. People think if they black, they free. Because now we got this great black movement going on today. We do, we got it. We're so black, we got the issue like this, this black movie. It's like being like Jesus black, that don't make you free. Being white don't make you free. 
Being black don't make you free. Being Spanish don't make you free. Jesus made you free. Amen. And he said, well, if Jesus is black and I'm black, I must be free. <laughs> You're confusing the dirt he was wrapped in. You're looking at the power came from the dirt. It didn't come from the dirt. It was what, it was, what was in the dirt. Because if you don't believe me, watch this. Go read your Bible. When he was crucified, the Bible, he said in the Bible, this day you will join me in paradise. He left the dirt on the cross and let them bury that and walk in the spirit. He left the dirt on the cross and walk and walk in the spirit. And Jesus even had the ability to shift you. Because when he, when, he, when, he, when he came, when he rose up, there was two men walking. So when you're trying to identify how he looked, you might not, you might want to say which, which time. Because there was two walking, and when the two was walking, Jesus walked in the midst of them, and they said they didn't recognize him. So meaning that he appeared to be different. So which Jesus are you trying to make? You, what, what, what Jesus that you're trying to find your hope in? The Son of God or the flesh? Listen. He says, silver and gold, I have none. Look at somebody say, silver and gold, I have none. Well, look at somebody, I got something. Though. Say, I'm not broke. See, that's why a Christian is never broke. for the situation God sets you in. So we don't got to the place where, well, I need money, I'm going to change this. I need money to change that. No. No, you know, what you need is to be healed. <laughs> it was funny. There was, a, there, was a, there was a movie I was looking at. And it was about in Africa, and, you know. It was having a drought. And the young boy, he went to school. And his parents and what they were in the drought, everything was drying up, and people were actually, this happened for real, people were actually dying. And the young man learned in school about electricity, electronics, I mean electricity. And he made a small windmill. And when he made the small windmill, he showed his dad, he got a radio, and he showed his dad with the small one he made, he plugged up the windmill, the, 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 the radio, took the batteries out, it was decayed and plug the electricity, the windmill wires to the radio and the wind began to move and, it, and the radio began to play. But sometimes fear will cause you to be lame. Sometimes fear will cause you to be stuck because you don't understand the knowledge. See, he had the, he had the knowledge of electricity and power to be able to change and save his community. Well, guess what? You got the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Look at somebody say, you have the knowledge of eternal life. Oh, thank you. Anyway, I just said that you have the knowledge to eternal life. People got all kind of knowledge going on today, but the knowledge that they have will pass away. But you have the knowledge to eternity. Finish reading. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Listen, I got something to give to you. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say it again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say it again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, in the name of the one who holds me. In the one, in the name of the, see, your testimony is what you have.
said, Lord, I have not. But I have the name of the one who changed me. I have the name of the one who delivered me. I have the name of the one who turned my I was a fisherman. I was out doing my own thing. And one day he walked by and said, oh, Peter, I'll make you a fisherman again. I have the one who changed my career to where I stopped fishing for fish and now fishing for souls. See, it's interesting that we're starting to somebody else's name. Still trying to find your ID in Gucci or, or Michael Core. Still trying to call on your name. They, they got a situation. Still trying to call on the name of Beyonce or, or Jazz Z. As if those were the names that saved your soul. Still searching for names to make you feel good instead of being delivered. He said, but Peter said, I have something. See, Peter held on to that way, which was good and everlasting. He said, I have something. He said, through the storm, he said, I'm not looking at your critical situation when I don't walk with one who has the power to change your condition and your position. You want, you, I know you want silver and gold, but I know somebody who can change you. Jesus. Change you. He said, silver and gold I have not. <laughs> but Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm a Jesus. He said, I'm raising up a church that's going to take people back to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 You can, you, can, you, can, you can argue about being black or white all you want to. I just say Yeshua, Yeshua, Amen. Jesus, Jesus, the Son of the Living God, Amen. the seed that I have accepted that transformed me from Polish to holy. Amen. Amen. The name I call. Have you ever felt like you was losing your mind yes. and you had to call on His name and He delivered you out of that situation? Yes. I've heard people testify. They were about, they sitting in, I heard a woman testify, she's sitting in front of a judge and, and she's talking about, she knows she did the crime, but she said, Jesus, you judge me. And what she should have got was 10 years and, and she got 30 days. Wow. But when she started serving 30 days, he died her down to 12. When you get used to being lame, you don't know the power of the one you say you call upon. <laughs> then I heard somebody praying, is that some of us don't get delivered because you don't want to be delivered. Because the Bible says some life happens because that these are evil. You don't want to fast. Because remember now, Peter said, he fastened his eyes on him. God's been trying to get you and me to fasten your eyes on him, but you won't fasten your eyes on Lord. Why? Because you know you're going to expect something. So when God begins to do, you don't fasten your eyes on God. 
Let me tell you, you don't fasten your ears on hearing what God says. He says, Seven and gold I have not, but Jesus of Nazareth. He's saying, I know somebody who can change your condition, your position. Look at somebody say, I know somebody who can change your condition, your position. When you talk to people, stop talking. Stop trying to read their mind. Tell them about the Jesus. Tell them about the Jesus that delivered you. Tell them about the Jesus that set you free. Stop just trying to use. You're trying to use your gift at a time. Use the name. You sitting there trying to figure out. Uh -huh. You was hurt and you, you went through this. But in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What do you say? What do you say? Next? What do you say? Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. See, watch this. That's, that's, that's significant. The right hand is the hand of fellowship. He said, I took him by the right hand. Because he says, you are free. Even though you're crippled, I got a plan for you.
Don't act like you ain't been there. Don't act like you ain't been there. I was there. <laughs> and then they act like they want something. So then, you know what happened with crippled people, with, with, with religious people? And instead of, remember now, my job was to extend. I can't extend something being on the same level. Yeah. In this yeah. You sit down and become crippled with the crippled person. Yeah. And then you want to try to minister to them. Laying in the same sin yeah. with the yeah. And they don't mind because they ain't never seen nobody stand and see the salvation of the Lord. They ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. They ain't never seen the right standing of God. But see, what's this? But when you see the cripple, the only way I can help her up by standing up. See, the only way I can help her is by standing up. See, if I try to help her up, this is what we're doing. And both of y'all trying to get in a new position, but you're both crippled. And then, you know what? I found out her being crippled that she liked money. So I'll make her happy with some money. She kind of, so even though I was, play, I, was, I was playing Christ, that me being crippled, I like sex. Woo! So we become a prostitute in the pen. <laughs> and then we're in the church. Playing games in the church. Laying on the back, we playing games in and the world said, why would I want your God? You ain't even got the strength to stand in him. You don't even have the strength to stand in him. Every time you stand, you fall. Wow. Don't get offended. God is giving you the answer to your problem. Your problem is, you, are, you, are, you, you, you got to die. I heard the man of God preach this morning. He said, see, you're giving only 80% of you. You only give the part. See, the person that's going to be able to stand has given everything. Now watch, I'm going to show you. See, if you only give 90%, the one that crippled will find the 10%. Satan will find the place that you have been given. And when he finds the place that you have been given, that's you down, that's you down. He will snatch you from that place. And next thing you know, you start losing the nine. Because you can't play. See, if, if you need attention and you're insecure, he'll find that place through that time. See, Delilah, Delilah kept messing with Samson to find the place. She said, I got to find the strength. But she knew that the Samson wasn't 100% so loud. Why?
whole place. Chef Creole. They went in Chef Creole. They in Chef Creole. They ministry. God sent them that way. And they in Chef Creole. They ministry. And they asked me, you ain't been to church in a while. They said, no. They said, what church is to go to? They said, well, I used to go to Divine Hope. Right in the pathway. God says now, I'm going to be able to tell the difference from the ones who are healed and those who are empty. Yeah. See, uh-huh. when you're empty, you're not going to look at them. See, many of them walk in the church and didn't look at them. Because when you're empty, you have nothing to give. But when you feel, I like the Peter, Peter fasting his eyes on He said, I'm going to be God says, some of us, I hate the Holy Spirit. You've been ignoring people. And God says, you've been ignoring because you're looking at the task. Jesus. Sit right down here. Sit down here. Me. And see, he says, you're looking at the weight. So it's easy to be like, Jesus. and some of us got the audacity to walk out and be praised. Jesus. God says, you're hypocrite. Stop playing. Jesus. God says, I ain't changed my plan. God, God said, my plan is to save the lost. I'm going to change. Until I come, keep building my kingdom. He said, it's not about your mind or power. I got to get I, I want y'all to see. I want y'all to see how it is. Read a little bit more. Don't stay here. I want you to get this. Because see, once he extended the right hand, and he lifted him up, see, you got to understand something. God says, what? Remember, remember, remember last God preached, he says, thank you. He preached, he says, when one soul, when one soul, he says, heaven has joy 
and we rejoice. He said, I'm raising up a church that's going to bring joy back to heaven. And rejoice me back to my church. You want to see how the church going to rejoice? Watch this. Keep going. And he took him by the right hand uh -huh. and lifted him up. Yes, he did. And immediately his feet and ankle bones Come received on. strength. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's time to get your walk together. Look at friends. It's time to get your walk together. It's time to get your walk together. Go ahead. And he leaping up stood. He did what? And he leaping up stood. He leaped up and stood. Stood. Go ahead. And walked. And walked. And walk. Go ahead. And he didn't sit down. He didn't sit back down, right? Because love is action. He walked with the way. Go ahead. Wait up. Wait up. And he entered with them into the temple. So, so wait a minute. Hold on. So the one who's standing your pathway. Entering into the temple with them, uh -huh. walking and leaping and praising God. So he in the temple. He got this one has somebody praising. He got in the temple. He got in the temple. The praise is coming back. It might not come to you, but it's going to come to you in the pathway. And I'm just, and 
and you better not tap them and say, calm down, relax. And don't try to do that, they try to give me when I got saved. It's my, oh, it ain't gonna last. The devil is not gonna So when you tell me, when I got saved, they gonna try to tell me, he only excited right now. Thank you. 
victory. Bless me, Flash. Bring it under submission. Because what happens, y'all think I'm joking. There's too many women and men who are backwards. You are out of order. And then you are saying, when you fall, I'm only human. I'm only human. My Bible says that the true worshiper shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Look at somebody say, I fall. I fall. Now watch this. I want y'all to get ready. Because we're about to bring this to me. Go ahead. Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. So all the people saw somebody's transformation. They saw praising God. Let me tell you something. God, God was looking for people that's going to praise him. This is going to trick you a lot. Because the church is growing. Spirit that's going on today, don't nobody. But see, they are looking at a man who they once knew was in a position that was lame. They in church, they in prayer, they in our prayer. The Bible said they in our prayer, they're good. But they walk the one they walk past. They, they didn't have the power. They had. They, they want to go communicate, but they ain't got no power. We want to walk past. Now watch it. And I told y'all earlier, my job, apostle job, pastor job, our job, we, we doing our job. Our job is to preach that Christ be born in you. Yeah. I want, I don't care. You can keep your money. You can keep all I've got to see Christ born in you. God, I can't tell you no way. I've got to see Christ. I want to you. You want a man of God to rejoice? You want him to start celebrating? Oh my God, start praising. Oh God, use me. The church, the branch don't break off in its skin. I want you to extend. We want you to open your gifts. So don't start talking like you ain't a part of the family. We still, we still part of the family. We want to see you grow up. We want to see you pop us up. We want to see. We want to see you lay hands on the sick. I never get 
Speak on it. Hold on. <laughs> Another day. One day I asked my spiritual daughter to stay. They went to a gas station. True story. Years and years ago. They went to a gas station. Beautiful young ladies. They went to a gas station. It's about four or five dudes. Leaped out the car. They saw them. You know, they're like, they looking through the natural. They seen them. They ran up on them. They ran up on them. They're like, well, I said, so I got to get this. When they ran up on them, the young ladies began to minister Christ. Isn't it interesting? When they began to minister Christ, one dude told them he just got out of jail. They began to minister issues. See, when you minister Christ, they reveal issues. When you minister you, they hide issues. Because why? You can't solve their problems. You can make them feel good, but you can't solve their problems. And then they say, in mind, you're just another one of them church girls. Just another heart playing church girl. And no, I'm not going hey, I didn't call you a hearted. I said, that's the process. Here we go. Here we go. So here we are, right? Y'all got to get it. They start ministry. Watch what happens. Two of the Jews get saved. They get saved. They get saved. Watch. Because they didn't give them, because they gave them Jesus. Because they gave them light that was shine on the darkness. Because they gave them light that was shine on the darkness. And the guys watch, they didn't walk away with a phone number. They walked away with a light. And guess what? Heaven was joy. And guess what? They came to me. And it wasn't a testimony when those weak testimonies like, I don't feel the need. I don't feel the need. They don't know. Because I'm looking at you like you're crazy. Because the truth be told is, come on, you're sitting up on the world. And the Bible says a man is killed by his own lust. I want you to understand something. It's the ninth hour. Either you're going to give birth, it's going to be life or stillborn. Either you're going to life or stillborn. Because the truth be told is, God is saying, if you know more, and you keep killing my babies, you keep murdering my babies. He said, I'm going to, first of all, I'm, I'm going to uncover you. Why, why is he going to uncover you first? Because he wants everybody to know who he, he is in the first place. That's the truth. He will uncover you so everybody can see that you want to You know, I, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but I've got to say this to y'all. There are people that went to me this ministry. They 38 high. You know, I'm 38 high. Like this, you know, I'm talking about, because. She got pregnant. Mm. Yes, they are. Mm. 30 hot because she got pregnant. No, and she got it to mm. And I'm like, and I'm like, and I'm mad. I'm saying, because the fact is, and watch this. And no, it must be mad at God. Because I don't know what they're mad at. But the, but the reality of the situation I'm trying to say is this. When you're so private, yeah. You have no humility when you are exposed. You can run wherever you want to run. You ain't gonna outrun the darkness that you need. You need to outrun it. It's not, it's not that God wants to condemn you. But God ain't gonna, let me tell you, I don't know where we get this from. God is not down with sin. He is not down with sin. His whole plan was to take you out of sin. And watch this. He says, now the church. And the people saw him walking and praising God. The people saw him. Watch this. The people saw him doing something they couldn't do. They saw him doing something they couldn't do. Go ahead. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. 
and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Now watch this. The people God now sent in your pathway, people gonna know them. They gonna know how they live. They gonna know them. Cause why? Cause to see you. To see God's power, they gotta know what you are. See, that's why some of y'all, your testimony. You like the woman going, let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. You see the trying to make something about me like you ain't gonna have You see the trying to make something to see you like you ain't gonna step with nobody. You trying to make something like you can't understand me. Okay. That's why I love what a demon. When a demon started coming to that young girl, a demon said, let me tell you. A demon said, let me tell you something. I had three babies too. But she said, let me tell you about Jesus. She didn't hide her back. She said, let me tell you about the one. I had three babies. I was living just like you. But let me tell you about the one that you trying to get your hand on the You ain't, you ain't, oh, so you ain't got no, so he ain't delivered you for nothing. Mm. So you always be, yeah, yeah, this, I never, I never go through. You know why? Because when you start telling them that they, that, when you tell me what God did for you, it gives me hope that he can do it for me. Come on. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They knew it was the one begging for na natural things. Go ahead. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. So what's what happened in the church? What's what happened in the church? They were filled with wonder and amazement. What's what happened in the church? Filled with wonder and amazement. I listen to my brother preach. And he'll tell his testimony. You know why men of God keep telling our testimonies and telling what we were? I'll talk about it when he was this man. He's trying to show you. I'm trying to show you that God is a keeper. See, when somebody comes to testimony, you can talk about it, right? There's no shame, it's not you no more. God says, I gotta get a church. Let's come back over here. Come on, come on. He said, I gotta get a church. Come here, come here, Come stand over here. See my right He says, I gotta get a church from the place of sitting down. Stand here. To reach you down. He said, I gotta get you from the place of sin down. So now you can reach down. Because 
if you never reach down, we never grow. Because you might be the only Jesus ever seen. I've got to get you from sitting down to reaching down. He said, I'm tired of a church that's sitting down, come sit down, and want to sit down. No. See, try to lift each other up again. Try to lift each other. It's hard to cripple people to lift each other up. He said, I got to have somebody standing and seeing the salvation of the Lord. I got to have somebody standing and seeing the salvation of the Lord. He said, if you're going to be a little bit more, you're going to go home. Verse 11. Uh -huh. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, mm -hmm. all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, uh -huh. greatly wondering. Uh -huh. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Yea, men of Israel, uh -huh. why marvel ye at this? Uh, he said, Why you marvel? You know what he really, I thought he really was saying? What you expect when you're in the presence of God? So they've been going to church back and forth. They marvel at something they should be expecting. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Watch this. I told y'all this one time. There was a young lady. She was in the church. She was, they were in, they, there was a group of them. They was getting ready to leave. And they was on this signs and wonder thing. They was like, we want to see signs and wonder thing. And God had an issue. He said, I said, God, what's wrong with her? He says, she has a, he says, her issue is faith. I said, what? He said, and I told her, I said, I said your issue is faith. She got, her, she got hot. She got so hot, then they left. Her, oh, about five of them, seven of them left, they left. One day I was on Facebook, it's my, she on Facebook, let me tell you what she said. She went to the church, they doing signs and wonders. She, 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 she's oppressed. She said, I have never seen this before in no church I've been to, been to. Watch this. She's, I guess she saw somebody, somebody, a miracle. She said, I've never seen this in no church I've been to. But when I read it, I was grieved. And then I had to check with God. I said, God, am I grieved because I know maybe she's going to watch it? I have to you examine yourself. I said, God, I don't know but i got to ask the question. He said, no. He says, I'm grieved. And I said, what's up, God? He said, she saw, she counted a leg growing greater than salvation. She perceived the miracle she saw was greater than the life she gave. He said, see, I told you, believe it or not, I told you it was a faith issue. She don't believe what I gave her. So she repeated him to see things to believe. So guess what? I can't get her to understand. I can't get her to understand her position. Because she always got to see something. She always got to see something. So I can't get her to understand. Why? Because she always looking. And I love it too. I love it too because watch this. They start following. People start following. They gonna follow when they see lives change. And I'm like, you know what's funny? See y'all, many of us, you're trying to catch a hold to this microwave church that's going. See this microwave church where they're setting up. Let me tell you how they develop this microwave church. They developed the microwave church by polling people. That's it. They did. You can read them. I'm telling you, yes, they did. They what they did, they began to do a poll and found out what was comfortable for people. So the people, for people, it's 45 minutes. So don't preach longer than 45 minutes. When, listen, when you create a church comfortable for people, people don't transform. They get to change. Jesus. Preach the or his apostles. Because they flowed as the Spirit flowed, they flowed, and they weren't worried about no people. They weren't worried about any no people. And you don't want to stay going. You know what I'm saying? People say, Lord, where shall I go? Where shall I go, Lord? What are you about the words that you come to Where shall I go? Where shall I go? Feed me. Give me hope. I'm hungry and thirsty. Give me the word. I eat. Why? Because I need to get out. Now, we got a five song. Ooh, ooh, come on, come on. Uh, 
Listen. And God is desiring to minister to the heart. See, sometimes the preacher is preaching. And while he's preaching, he can shift all the way over here. And y'all like, why is he talking? Because God got somebody he dealing with over here. <laughs> and watch this. But watch this. But when you rejoice, you don't mind the whole shit. Because you believe the whole service is about the living. The whole service is about the So you ain't going to sleep saying, God, so do we. So do we. We the world of the living. Doing the praying. Don't let them walk out the way they walk in. God, so do we. Do a whole kind of work. Stir them up, God. Speak to that issue. Ye men of Israel, men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why you marvel? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Now watch this. Come on. Now I gotta give you. After God tell you what he's gonna do, now I need to give you the warning. Because some of us, when you start seeing that person in front of you, and you see God's power start moving, I'm telling you, y'all don't understand this, it's about to be, it's, it's, it's already started. He says, why are you looking on us? Don't look on me. As if I'm like I have the power. Like, like I'm the one with the power. He said, why are you looking at us? You don't understand. I wouldn't even be here. He said, so he, watch me. He's giving them a warning. Go ahead. But why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? Hey, did anybody catch it? You got to catch it. No, he said something. He said two things. He said, not by our own power and holiness. Not by our own power and holiness. He didn't just say power. He said, there got to be some holiness there. Holiness there. He said, not by our own power, because we're holy. Issue. Holiness will bring deliverance. He said, Why do you look on me as if this is my power or my holiness? As if I have some strength of myself to change somebody's condition or position. The truth be told, I couldn't even change my own. Go ahead. Verse 13. The God of Abraham. He said the God of Abraham, oh, okay, go ahead. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Of Jacob. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. Has glorified his son Jesus. He did what? Has glorified his son Jesus. He did what? Has glorified his son Jesus. Does the Bible say Christ in you is the hope of what? Christ in you is the hope of what? So glorify the God in you. Jesus. 
the apostles are just like, I don't know, he get them hooked. Then he said, he's like, they all happy. He said, let me tell you, let me tell you what you did. You know why he don't tell you? Because let me tell you why you got to be real with people. What you let me tell you why he's saying what you did, what we did. Because you will never value what you did until you know why. See, and this little gospel people kind of come out, they don't want to tell you, you ain't, you're not a sinner. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But Jesus came to save the sinner. Yeah. Amen. And if you say it, you should say your name. So he can clean your sin, God. Amen. So that means you ought to be able to be transformed out of sin. Amen? That's the glory. That's the glory. Amen? Amen. That's the glory. And, uh, and, we, and we, gotta, we have to grasp that. Because it's hard to extend your hand right here in the fellowship. And this somebody out of dirt with you dirt. Amen? And God can clean it up. Listen. And I'm going to tell you something. I want to talk to Everybody eyes up here. I want to talk to you young people. You 12, 11, 13? No. You're not too young. You're not too young to understand the gospel. You're not too young to understand what is required of you. You know what's required of you in school. You know what's required of you wherever you go, where knowledge is being given to you. Mama and daddy give you chores. Mama and daddy give you chores. Am I right, young people? Do they expect those chores to be done? And when you don't do them, do they deal with you accordingly? So if you can understand mama and daddy, how come you can't understand God? You can't. So we need to get from that. I know in the school system, we got this old test type of mentality. But see, we can need to get away from a test mentality to, a, to what we call a teaching mentality, a learning mentality, meaning an expectation of learning mentality. Where we expect you to learn, not just to pass a test, we want you to know the knowledge. We want you to know the knowledge. Amen? Because sometimes I think it kind of, we think it's in the church, well, I'm going to try to pass this. I must come to church just to try to pass this test so I can get the reward. No, the reward is your transformation. So you ain't transformed, you ain't passed the test. Remember I told you, remember what God said earlier, don't try to dress up your lane. Don't dress up being lame. Amen? Is that it? Read a little bit more. Go ahead. Verse 14. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desire a murderer to be granted unto you. That's a hard sermon to preach at this point. But you know what? He got their attention. He got their attention. You know why he had to preach that sermon after he got their attention? Because he wants them to be saved for real. He wants them to understand the process to getting that power that they just saw. He wants them to understand. Remember now, he, he, they saw what just happened. So he wants them to see, you saw this lame man walking to him. Let me show you how he got there. Let me show you that you, the one you hated, the one you crucified. Sometimes, let me tell you something. See, when a man and a woman got out talking to you, and they're, and they're hitting them, hitting them wounds, or they're hitting them areas, they're trying to show you the area that's the, the, the hindrance from somebody else to get the living. That's right. See, until they recognize that, they can't get nobody else to live. See, cause watch this. Y'all gotta get this. I promise you, they will follow them because they want their power. They will just like the books of Acts. They, that's the only reason they will smile. They were like, they came. What is this? Just like they, they, they want the power. But see, they didn't understand. He said, let me show you the process. Yes, God. <laughs> the process is in this Jesus who was crucified. Yes, who you crucified. So the process to get the power, y'all been here with God about to say. So the process to get the power is to understand the cross. Yeah. You want the power, you gotta understand the cross. Because the cross is a place where flesh dies. And spirit rises. Verse 15. And you have killed the prince of life. Mm. Whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. What are they witnesses of? Of Christ's resurrection. Wait a minute. What are they witnesses of? So they are witnesses. 
of someone who can be changed from crippled to rise. They are witness. He said the power came because they witnessed. Come on, you can't. Dead is it. They believe. Everybody in this room, when you're born again, you accept the Christ. You are witness that you believe that. If you believe he died, you gotta believe he was resurrected. So watch this. When you look at somebody's situation, you don't look hopeless because you are witness through the Holy Spirit that God has the power to raise up a person from a dead situation. The Holy Spirit is about Acts 1 and you shall receive power to be a witness. When the Holy Spirit is inside of you, he's bringing all things in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Guess what? If he's bringing things in remembrance of Jesus Christ, then you are a witness that Christ was dead and was resurrected. Amen? Amen. That means when you look at somebody, when you look at uh, when you look at uh, Jay-Z, or you look at a uh, Beyonce, you know they, first of all, you're not going to be in there. Because you know they did. But you also know that your prayers, the sincere prayers of the righteous, that you are praying that God can raise them from the dead state that they are in to life. Listen. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we done shouted. <laughs> I need you to digest this in your spirit. Until you can believe that this Jesus who died on the cross was resurrected on the third day and be able to see people pass their faults and see what they need and say, because watch this, there are going to be some people God going to put in your path they They're going to go crazy. They're going to look. Some people God going to put in your path they're going to curse you out at your job. And you were sent there. What's this? To believe that they can be changed. Some people God gonna put in your pathway gonna be in your family. I'm about to mess some of y'all up. Some people God gonna put in your pathway might be gonna be people who molested you. Come on, come on. Oh, now we don't want to talk. I don't have that kind of love. I don't have that kind of love. Yes, you do. No, you don't, but he do. Well, his desire is to be lost. Some of us, some people got going to put in your pathway. This go, ooh, I see. I hear you, Holy Spirit. They're going to be white. And they're going to challenge everything inside you that's racist. Some people got going to put in your pathway. They're going to be a woman. It's going to be a man. They're going to challenge you. To see will you extend the hand of fellowship or will you extend the hand of self? If you extend the hand of fellowship, they're going to get life. Amen. If you extend the hand of self, you're just another perpetrator of death. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs>